gaining admission to the Legion is a matter of ceremony. That that's all I got memorized. That that's it. That's what I got. Oh, what's up? It's uh welcome back to Let's Play Dark Souls 3 Kita Edition. As we I don't know why I was even quoting uh, our man, our crestfallen warrior of Dark Souls 3. I don't even know. Oh, something I forgot to mention, I think, is this guy right here, who's going to stop, who's just, oh, well, I know I mentioned him and talked about him, but I think that's part of the, uh, that's part of the zeal, the zealousness of those who are devoted to the Aldrich faithful, the Aldrich truth. All right, I didn't want to deal with this guy. I didn't want to, but hey, he came at me, bro. He came at me. You all saw, you all witnessed that. I like that there's even less matter of ceremony that we're beginning a new episode of Let's Play Dark Souls 3. So I just got done watching a video called Happy Souls. If you haven't seen it, search it. I'll try to remember putting it in my description of my video. If I don't, I apologize. But I highly recommend checking it out. Looks like it took the guy who made it around a year to make it because it's just an incredible animation. He actually did the music as well on the video. I'm going to recommend you guys check it out, search it up. It's on Dark Souls 2. It's sort of just a fun animated retrospective of Dark Souls 2. Just uh, really, really well done. So if you guys enjoy animated uh, spoofs, animated goofs even... Uh, it's probably the best best done one that I've seen. Oh wow, so I didn't even realize this Grave Warden does pyromancy damage. I'm not sure if that really matters. It's interesting because we have Grave Wardens here and we have Grave Wardens referenced in other areas but not necessarily seen. Uh, and I'd imagine they look similar. I mean, they're they're different, I'd, I'd imagine. They just have a similar, similar name because they're both Grave Wardens. But here we have the entrance to... The Cathedral of the Deep with some more crying ladies and these statues which seem to be transforming and altering in shape to these winged creatures. I haven't really figured out quite what that reference is as we never see a creature like that unless it's supposed to be something like the Gru that we see along the path, the road to sacrifice. Maybe that's kind of what it's referencing is something becoming a Gru. But I don't know. Uh, we get a red bug pellet. Uh, actually, let's see if that's got anything for me there. We already looked at that. Prepared in the Cathedral of the Deep for the Evangelist. Uh, I think we talked about it briefly, but the Evangelist would make these and feed it to someone to make them resist burning. It was to help with fire resistance, essentially, because they would burn bodies. No, you fall back down. Oh, that didn't, that didn't do quite what I was hoping it would do. I was hoping it would do a little bit more than that. That's all right. That's all right. We got it in the end. Alright, so this is some of that fun Miyazaki level design. Okay, I was like making sure I knew where that was. I was like, have I been down there before? I have. Walking over rooftops, dropping over, walking over buildings, going over rafters, and not that that's a rafter, but also like archways and things like that. I am a fan of that. That's part of what I really like about uh, his level design. I'm thinking, like, I guess we see a bit of it in Dark Souls 2, but I feel like we see more of it in any game that Miyazaki had a hand in. I'm thinking. Oh, we got a Thrall hood! Oh, nice, now we can look like a Thrall, what I always wanted. A hood used to cover the head of lesser folk who were set to work as slaves throughout Lothric, and occasionally used to shame and humiliate criminals. Now I got a big eyes, a hole sockets, eye hole sockets as well. Just what I always wanted. Oh, I actually thought I would kill him there. I just, I don't know, I thought I had him, so I kind of stopped paying attention, just because I was like, oh, whatever, I got him, it's good. Yeah, I'm kind of cheating in the sense that I know that there's people here. I've played through this game so many times at this point. It's kind of, uh, did you like that dance we just did? I feel like that like deserves some dance music. It's like we were doing some like samba or salsa or something. With each other. Anyways, I think I've been in this game essentially like five times at this point, if not more. I've been doing my lore playthrough for my lore videos. I actually just uh, finished today my High Lord Wolner video, if you're curious when I'm recording this. I just finished editing that and uploaded that video today on the lore of 
Wolner. There's not a, um, excessive war, war lore on Wolner, which is why the video is under 10 minutes, which is pretty short for me. But, you know, it's I found him to be an interesting enough character that I want to cover him, especially, especially since he's a boss that we don't know too much about. about. All right, so... Over there, you can see an item, and if you really pay attention, there's a Thrall hanging up ahead. Pay a lot of attention to that in this area. Also, this is something I referenced in my Alders lore video, for those of you who've seen it, if you haven't. Uh, right there, you have an evangelist who seems to be preaching to a bunch of undead. So, you can see the evangelist there actually speaking to, speaking those verses. I got the book in front of her. All the evangelists are females, FYI. If that hasn't, we haven't covered that before, which I think we did. And yeah, preaching, preaching it. Preach that funky gospel. So yeah, I, I think it's kind of just a cool, if you really, if you actually notice it, that's what's going on there. And I, I think that's pretty awesome. Okay, so for those of you who think that like, I'm being like a little sloppy here, which I've only had one person mention it, which is cool. I've, it's fine, I get it. But the thing is that I actually usually use a completely different sword, which is way quicker. And that's why I keep on attacking when I do, is because I'm kind of like expecting to pull off the hits that I do. And I'm, I have to remind myself, I'm like, oh, that's right, I don't actually have that weapon. I also play fairly aggressive, if you haven't noticed. I don't use my shield pretty much at all, unless I'm going for a parry. So... That's the only time I use a shield. I think A, Bloodborne sort of taught me to teach aggressively, play aggressively, not teach aggressively, but play aggressively. Bloodborne taught me that. But beyond that, I'm also kind of, especially after playing through as many times as I have, I've just gotten used to the more speedrunner sort of method of playing. So, oh yeah, there are thralls hanging out there. I really should have shown you guys that. There are a lot, a lot of thralls in this area if you haven't already noticed. So this is like land of the thrall, home of the brave. Oh jeez, home of the th wow. Obliterated by the thralls. All right, I'm gonna quick cut it back to this area in this region, so I will see you guys shortly. Also, hey, I died. This is gonna bring me closer to getting my goal of going more hollow. So before we move on, I actually think this will allow me to level up again. So I'm gonna do that just in case I die. So we just might as well utilize that. So let's go ahead and go with, uh, yeah, let's do another dex at the moment. Eventually I'm going to want to raise up some strength so I can use my favorite item. But yeah, so now we've got, let's take a look. I think that's three, yeah, three dark sigils. So we're going to have to die twice again so I can get a fourth dark sigil. The goal here is to get five dark sigils. That is the overall goal. All right, and we are back. Uh, so I didn't go up here to the left just because I feel like there's no reason to at the moment. Let's go ahead and see if we can find where those thralls were jumping down from. So, uh, I actually don't see where they're coming from. Huh. I mean, maybe they're climbing from the side? No? From above? I mean, I assume it's somewhere above, right? That's where you'd have to assume. Oh, I was going for the backstab and just completely failed at it. That's all good. Ambush ahead. Yes, I've realized that. All right, so there's one guy who's going to jolt, jolt out at you from there. So that guy, I'm like, okay, I got it. I got it, right? All right, looks like it was on this side of the statue, the left side. All right, wasn't there a third guy who was, like, coming at me? Ah, well, whatever. So there's going to be another one here, too, as you can see is up there. Actually, another two, apparently. Another two of them. All right, I was trying to trigger him and be stealthy and dodge, but I messed up part of that, clearly. It's all right. Got out of the way in time eventually. He just fell on my head. That doesn't hurt. It doesn't even do a thing. All right, we got any more thralls up there? Any more thralls? Oh, ooh. That's going to stop me from being able to heal, actually. Uh, they actually show you that right away if you go to the left. So that item that I picked up was an undead charm. Undead hunter charm. Used long ago by Lloyd's cleric knights on their undead hunts. Although all Father Lloyd is long forgotten by the way of white, his hunts have lived on, and this charm allows one to challenge undead without fear of tenacious healing. 
and it blocks Estus recovery within a limited area. So not only does this tell us a little bit about Allfather Lloyd, who is uh, forgotten by the way of white, or long forgotten by the way of white, which is actually really interesting there. Um, but also, since we picked it up beforehand, that tells you that mechanic of what these enemies are tossing at us and what it does. So if you actually really pay attention, it's going to teach you before it happens to you, which is pretty nice. So if you remember before here, you see yet another ambush waiting. So I'm assuming that's what this guy was doing. Maybe was he was waiting up here like that. Just just waiting with his butt out. Oh, oh man. I totally screwed that up. Well, whatever. At least I got part of it off. Man, that was like a huge failed ambush on my part. I'm no thrall, apparently. I am no thrall is what that says. But that's the best way to take that and get that red bug pellet, in my opinion. And you come back around to this spot. Regardless, it's not that difficult if you want to just grab the item right away, but I figured might as well show where the ambush is coming from. So, yeah, anyways, the interesting though about that is that apparently Allfather Lloyd is pretty much forgotten at this point. Sorry, sorry Allfather Lloyd. Apparently you just weren't, uh, you know, weren't good enough. Weren't good enough for people to remember you. Because some would say that you just took the name for yourself and you didn't even deserve the name. You just took the name Allfather Lloyd just because you were Gwyn's uncle. Who even cares about that? Who even qu You're not Gwyn. You're just his uncle, man. Oh! Doesn't make you no all father. You're not his father. Who is his father? I don't even know. Ooh, check out that parry. At the jump attack. So that first one that I tried to parry, I actually don't think you can parry from the other Grave Warden. Because I've never been able to get it. Ooh, we get a Grave Warden Squirt, which is awesome because this actually gives us some lore. So, Grave Wardens were tasked with disposing of the ever rising corpses that plagued the cathedral. Makes sense for Grave Warden. Their clothes are utterly putrid, drenched in the blood, and mucilage of their undertaking. And its entire Grave Warden is at the Cathedral of the Deep. Specifically, this one's referencing the Cathedral of the Deep. I don't think there's any items on the edge here, but I'm going to check just in case. Cool. Actually, if you look at the edge there, to the bottom right, you can actually see an item hanging on the side, so you know, like, hey, that's an area that I'm gonna be going to. Uh, let's see what else we can see down there. Uh, I assume that's Farron Keep down there. Uh, well, maybe the Farron Keep is within that, that wall, actually. Because that kind of makes sense to me, so maybe that's just kind of part of the Road of Sacrifice down there. Huh. Yeah, I think that's part of the road sacrifice. All right, anyways, let's keep on going. That that would be my assumption. That's what it looks like to me by the winding paths that we're going up. I was like kind of knowing where I am in relation to everything. I think it's more fun that way. Also, taking out just random enemies hanging out on the sidelines. You ain't gonna get me. You ain't gonna get me. I probably should have shown that giant entrance before and the fact that you actually can't open the door. That's kind of important. The main entrance, you can't open the door from this side. I didn't even walk over and show you guys that, so I apologize for not uh, showing you, which is something I should, really should have done. Yeah, so these guys are so preoccupied with praying that they don't really care that you're just murdering their brethren over there. Oh, somehow I missed you. I apologize. Apologize for that. We'll take care of you now. Don't worry. I got you. I got your stomach with my sword. <laughs> don't even worry about it. Alright, so these guys are some true, straight-up evangelists, or, not evangelists, that's the wrong word, just, I don't know, just fans, fans of Aldrich, you know, because they're willing to kill themselves. Glory be Aldrich, you know what I'm saying? Glory be Aldrich. And all that we get is an ember, but hey, you know, embers are useful, for sure. So now, we can actually enter into the innards, the inner sanctum of the Cathedral of the Deep. And I don't know what it is, either something about my laptop right now or my place, but I think I need to turn on some AC because it's freaking hot in my place right now, and it's like 11.40 p.m., so... I, for it to be this hot right now, that ain't right. All right, so see this blob right here? It's actually got a bunch of, uh, looks like feed inside of it or something. Also, similar to Alderich, it burns. Oh, baby, does it burn. So we're going to... And same with those, like, grotesque alders. I, I'm saying the wrong stuff here. I meant to say, like, those blobby, weird creatures at the bottom. 
not Aldrich. So my mistake there. I'm just specifically talking about those creatures at the bottom who like put maggot stuff on you. Uh, this might look like a trap because it is. I'm actually only saying it looks like a trap because I've seen people actually be cautious and be like, that looks like a trap to me. Specifically, one of my close friends uh, who I saw playing it. Dual Charm. All Father Lloyd's knights lived in fear of his duels of judgment, in which verdicts were carried out by his sword of law. I don't know if we actually get his sword of law. That'd be pretty cool if we do get it at some point. And I'm just mistaken, or we did get it in a previous game. Alright, so now we have some of what we saw before on the statue. These are a bunch of the deacons. So these guys right here are followers of Alderich. And we actually saw them on the statue before. That was uh, at the Cleansing Chapel. The Cleansing Chapel. Oh, all right. So we have a pathway right here, which goes down. We have a pathway out. And we have a pathway here with a blob right overhead. So another uh, ambush just waiting for you. But I don't know. Lots of ambushes in this area. But I'm totally cool with it because I prefer ambushes because you can spot them ahead of time if you're really searching and looking over... Uh, the Dark Souls 2 method, which was just throwing a ton of enemies at you and being like, there's just a ton of enemies. Ambushes, to me, are a more interesting way to, to do in difficulty. Especially if it's not every area, right? Like, this area specifically is heavy with all ambushes, but we hadn't really gotten that before. At least to this extent, with ambushes and guys out in hiding and all that. And we kind of have already gotten our introduction to it. So something that you know to look out for in this area, because we've been seeing a bunch of it. Ah! I saw him dropping, but I didn't. I actually thought I was gonna be able to roll past him. I had rolled, but I guess I was a little late. Anyways, clearly it doesn't do that much damage. Also, it doesn't put maggots on you, so it's not that big of a deal. So hey, you learned that, but they're not that big of a deal, right? That's an important thing to learn. All right, we're gonna start by going down here before we go into the other region and area. Simply because elevators, hey, it's a Souls game. That usually means it's a shortcut in a Souls game. And if you're paying attention to where, like, your geography and all that, you'll say, wait a second, it feels like I'm coming back to something. It feels like this is indeed a shortcut, because it is. And we get right back to the Cleansing Chapel. I could go ahead and level up right now, but that's all right. Uh, I'm gonna keep on. Uh, I'll take a risk. I'll keep on going. Want to play a little bit further before we head all the way back to Firelink Shrine. This ain't no Dark Souls one where you can level up at bonfires, so I'm gonna be a little more risky here. That said, I think bonfires were a little more spread out in Dark Souls one, and that's part of the reason why, in my opinion, is because of the level up mechanic. Also, I, I don't know. I kind of liked how spread out they were. I thought that was just better. It made it more intense. Oh yeah, so yeah, there's a giant here if you hadn't... If you look from above, you can see the giant below. This guy, there's no way to be friends with him. You can attack him from here. I actually don't know if you can kill him. I've actually never tried, but I'd imagine you can. Get Lloyd's sword ring here. Oh, I was late on my dodge. Dang, I wanted to get his fingers and be like, let me just cut your fingers for you for doing that to me. Exploding bolt. We'll look at that ring in just a moment. Oop. Gotta do some dodges first. Some sick dodges. Uh, oh, whoa, gee, what? Oh, my. Okay, that was bad. That was really bad. Man, I felt so good, and that arrow completely threw me off of my game. Anyways, we can come. you can come back and get those items later, because we can deal with that giant a little bit later on. Man, I just got an arrow sticking through my face right now. All right, so, again... You can go all the way down, or we can go above this bridge area first, where we can see some of the ambushes that were waiting for us, like that thrall hanging over the edge right there. So let's go ahead and take him out. I say no to ambushes, and yet even more. And yet we have another thrall hanging out above there. Actually, I guess it's not a thrall. It looks like it's a blob. So I knew there was something else up there, but I just, you know, assumed it was a thrall. You, you're going to drop? You, you're going to drop? Okay, cool. Got it. Seek Guidance. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the stuff that we got. So, first of all, uh, let's look at Seek Guidance. 
Miracle of Stray Souls displays more help from other worlds and reveals summon signs without using an ember. Faith serves as a guide for clerics, meaning they should have no need for secondhand wisdom. Be that as it may, this miracle has been passed down from soul to soul, providing a tiny ray of hope for the lost. Not really much there. Allfather Lloyd's Ring, however, let's take a look at that. We've been talking a whole lot about Allfather Lloyd here, who is the founder of the Way of White. Allfather's Lloyd's Ring. Ring given to Knights of the Way of White, depicting Allfather Lloyd's Sword of Law. Much time has passed since the worship of Lloyd was common in the Way of White. The clerics of Kareem had always strongly asserted that Lloyd was a derivative fraud, and that the Allfather title was self-proclaimed. Well, that's kind of what I was just saying earlier, because I thought that we'd already gotten an item that said that or heard that before, and maybe we hadn't, so my mistake if we hadn't. But yeah, so apparently the Kareem specifically thought that he was a fraud, as opposed to, say, Thorlin, which is where a lot of the Way of the White were from in Dark Souls 1, who seemed to very strongly believe in Allfather Lloyd. In fact, Lo Allfather Lloyd, in fact, he's on a coin in Dark Souls 1. That's how much they seem to be like, yeah, let's, let's th put his face on a coin. That's how much... It uh, important he has to us. I also want to point out, too, that we've been finding a lot of Way of White stuff here inside the Cathedral of the Deep, which I believe to be important in relating to Aldrich and whom he is as he's referred to as a saint at one point. The saint, uh, it's, eh! It's our crestfallen warrior friend who refers to him as a saint at some point, like he was a saint, and then they just tossed him in the cathedral. They were like, not for not for the fact of him being like a good heavenly saint, but just for the sake of him being so powerful after eating so much. But the fact that he was a saint and we're finding all this way of white stuff here would seem, in my opinion, to link him to the way of white. So it would seem to me he was a saint specifically of the way of white. All right, we get an ember up here, and this right here is where the arrow guy was shooting down at us before. So this is another way to take him out, and there we see our giant again. I'm imagining from up here would be a good sniper spot to just take him out from above. But it's alright, we're not going to do that. We got, we'll got we have fun with him in a different location. So it's just stuck in my head right now, the Happy Souls video. The, there's this one song that goes... Dun, 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 That he wrote. That he wrote that little theme and it's fantastic. It's just completely stuck in my head. All right, so this, if you notice, because the chain is dangling forward, not that you can really tell that much since it's stuck under the carpet, is a mimic. Also, another thing that you guys pointed out to me is that if we really pay attention to the front here, you can actually see breathing every so often. There you go. All right, see how it just opened its mouth? And now it's going to close it up. Yeah, that's one thing. Another thing that we got that we can utilize, which might as well show it off here, this is from all the way back from Dark Souls 1, is if we throw an undead hunter charm at it. We're actually going to make it uh, not be able to attack us, and you can pick up the item from within it. The Deep Braille Divine Tome, which is what we get here. But yeah, so you can pick up the item without needing to... Uh, well, without needing to activate it, essentially, to attack you. And also... As you saw right there, that would allow me to really go ham on it and take out a lot, a lot of damage from him. You don't get a reward after that because you already picked it up. But except for uh, you can possibly get the Avarice uh, headgear piece from him, which is one of his possible drops. So that's one thing that you can get by killing it, which would be a good reason to kill it other than just the souls. Anyways, let's go ahead and look at this, this tome that we got. Where is in my key items? Deep Braille Divine Tome. A Braille Divine Tome of the Deep belonging to the Deacons of the Cathedral. Intended to teach divine protection to the Deacons of the Deep, but later dark tales were added to its pages, such that it is now considered a thing profane. So, bear in mind a couple things here. A, that profanity is likened with these dark miracles. The word profan, profanity, profane. And also, uh... That originally was for divine, but here in the cathedral we're getting this darkness. Also, I just want to show off this uh, mouse thing. I actually don't know what the animal is. If you do know, please comment below. Maybe it's a possum. 
I don't think it means anything. It's just what you see all over the place here. So I just wanted to point it out. Really, I think it means absolutely nothing. Oh, oh, there's another thrall. I was kind of busy thinking about, I don't know, just, I guess just goofing off, really. All right, there we go. Mainly because I wanted to take on this guy. I was thinking about like, oh, I got to worry about this guy coming up here. Stop. Whoop. All right. So you you definitely can parry this guy. You don't have to, but you can. And I'm doing a terrible job at it. Notice that he's using Divine, actually. Uh, so that kind of relates to everything we've been seeing, right? That he's going to use something Divine here. So, okay. This is just, this is just Bullocks, right? <laughs> this is just absolute crap on my part. I have more places to be, more places to go. Can't always get every parry, unfortunately. So, lots more ways to get critical attacks than just parrying. Now I'm saying. So, two odd possible options here. Left or straight ahead. Let's go straight ahead. Oh, by the way, if you haven't noticed before, we see all these uh, candles, which would seem to be the the sign of the Cathedral of the Deep. Kind of looks like a messed up menorah. Menorah, by the way, is a Jewish candle that you light during Hanukkah. A series of can candles. It holds candles. It holds eight candles, to be precise. Oh! Hey! Actually, it holds nine, because you got one in the middle and four on each side. But, yeah. Alright, so this guy... Ah! Wow, I'm doing really bad here. Alright, I'm actually going to retreat for a moment, just to not get darked and cursed right away. Because I would like to defeat him. So this guy reminds me pretty heavily of enemies from Bloodborne. I think that that's where they they got pretty good at their beastly designs from that. This would be a malformed beast sort of creature. You can actually see, let's take a look at it since I got him trapped there. A bunch of skulls on top of it, which is pretty cool. Also, I like its mouth too. I'm kind of just stalling for time because of the skull, by the way. The curse that I don't want to get, but I really like the design of this creature. Wow, I am I don't want to cheese him. I actually don't want to cheese him. I'd like to fight him for real. There we go. I guess uh, I could go for the the way that most people like to see me fight, which is by you know, targeting. Alright, there we go. So got it. Also, was that six legs? I think it's six legs. Man, that guy's cool looking. Alright. We get Aldrich's sapphire off of it, so let's go ahead and take a look at the sapphire. Which I also think is important that we got it from it, as we look at what it says. A malformed ring left by Aldrich, Saint of the Deep, recovers FP from critical attacks. Aldrich, infamous for his appetite for flesh, apparently had the desire to share with others his joy of imbibing the final shudders of life while luxuriating in his victim's screams. Such a gruesome detail there. But the fact that you find this off of this creature, and we'll find another one eventually too, um... That to me indicates that this creature is probably one who he shared that luxury of imbibing on flesh with, which is what malformed the creature. That is just my opinion. It is not a fact at all, but that would be my opinion. Ah, the thralls, man, the thralls. So many thralls. All right, so yeah, part of the reason I wanted to be embered up was A, for the extra health. I mean, why not? But partially because you'll get invaded by Lock Longfinger Kirk here, specifically if you're Embered. And if you want the Kirk gear, well, you better, uh, you know, beat him. Or, I mean, at least, like, get summoned by him. Oops. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're going to get damaged if he rolls into you. If you guys haven't seen Iron Pineapple's video, The Fan Club of Kirk, you guys should really check it out because it's just... It is fantastic. Really hilarious. Quite hilarious. So that's two videos I'm recommending for you today. All right, this is no bueno. I gotta, I gotta just take him out. Ooh, I was early. Okay, all right. I can't fight him for real. I gotta be spammy piece of crap here. Sorry guys. I wanted to show like some real. Uh oh. I want to show some real legit stuff here, legit play. But I'm gonna have to just R1 spam because I don't want to die. Hey, sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. All right, we get the barb straight sword and the spike shield from him. Also some Estus, which I will happily take. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of this stuff. So uh, I believe one of them was the barbed straight sword, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. 
Sword of Longfinger Kirk, the infamous Knight of Thorns. This sword's blade is lined with countless deadly thorns. The thorns of this ominous weapon induce heavy bleeding. And then we also got the shield. Shield of Longfinger Kirk, the notorious Knight of Thorns. The surface bristles with thorns. Its vicious design makes it an effective weapon, and its thorns can inflict heavy bleeding on those unfortunate enough to be struck. So he's actually a character that originated in Dark Souls 1. And beyond that, he was actually inspired by a, a, a character in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. So, the I believe from the manga specifically. So that was where this character was inspired from. So, the more you know. Alright, so we can go straight up here and to the right where we see a giant. There's also that giant on the ground at this point. Or we can go, you know, take this path right here. Ignore the thrall. Don't even, don't even worry about him. Alright, fine, Thrall. I know, I know you want to get killed. I know. I know. And yes, I know that I was kind of just... I could have dodged it at any point, but I was like, eh, hey, he'll stop attacking at some point. I'll get my attack in right away. It won't matter. Alright, so from this entrance here, if we look down, we can see that maggoty creature down there. This is actually where we got one of those bleed rings before, earlier. And we also have two doors here. And what we'll find from opening this one is that it's actually the other shortcut back to the Cleansing Chapel. So now we have opened both of the shortcuts up. So now let's go ahead and take the other door and see where this path leads and takes us to. Alright, so apparently it's going to take us up. Now, if you remember that annoying archer from before when we first reached the outskirts of the Cathedral of the Deep, this is the guy who is shooting at you. But there's nothing really up here, right? So you want to make sure to explore. And if you do explore, you're going to find... Uh, why, what's this? It looks like the cleansing chapel, the top of that building, which is just cool to look at. But also a ladder! <laughs> I don't know why I decided to look at that, but I was like, you know what, actually I haven't really examined that too much yet, so it's just nice to examine something else. We find another deacon here. This one actually is not hostile, so we can take a nice long look at this deacon and be like, ooh, let's check out his, his beautiful details, since he's not hostile. Like, his gaping mouth, Aldrich, why did you force him to always be like that? Aldrich, what are you doing? Uh, and this candlestick, candelabra type of weapon that he uses. But, he must die. He also has a red robe instead of the blue one that we've seen a lot of the others carrying. Main reason I wanted to kill him was for this deep ring. So let's go ahead and take a look at the deep ring here. Allows attunement, attunement of additional spells. A ring bestowed upon the deacons of the Cathedral of the Deep, who we just murdered, so that would make sense why we got it from him. In the cathedral slumber, things most terrible, and as such, the deacons require a grand narrative to ensure they do not falter in their duty, a philosophy to ward away the madness beckoned by the grotesqueries at hand. And we have actually been seeing a bunch of that already with the maggoty creatures, with those undead who have maggoty stuff coming out of their stomachs, and now that malformed beast. Again, if we uh, look around, here we get a drop that takes us to uh, even more upper areas of the Cathedral of the Deep. So this is actually just a giant cathedral, really, when you think about it. Alright, alright, I'm just gonna say, every single time, I thought I was going to stunlock him. I thought I was going to get a stunlock on him. And I failed. Every time. Every single time. Alright, I think there might be some thralls around here. It seems likely, right? Oh, there we go. Didn't see where he dropped from, but... You know, if, uh, if, it's the cathedral, if it's the Cathedral of the Deep, you know you got some thralls. No, you are, we will not shoot your flute at me, your whistle at me. It's actually called a blow dart. Oh, hey, bye, thrall. Oh, well, what do you know? Well, now we see where that one with the flame burge, flame burg, flame burge, flame burge, uh, drops down from. So that's pretty cool. Oh, well, I really wanted that parry, but it would not be. Because I just completely failed. Whoa, hey. Hey there. Hey now, you're an all-star. 
Gotcha. Gotcha. Man. Oh, here's one of the thralls. Nope. No and no. Oh, so there you go. Raptors ahead. Raptors ahead. Be wary. Any thralls? Any thralls? And I'm looking for a thrall. Thrall here, left, right, forward, anywhere. We get an arbalist, which actually does not have any lore to it. And now, what do you know? Of course, there's another thrall. Of course. Oh, wow. Nice. I wasn't even planning on getting that backstab. <laughs> Alright. Stuck him to a tree for a little bit. And final location here is going to lead us to yet another thrall. And a pale tongue, which let's go ahead and take a look at it. Oh! Oh, wait. Okay. Alright. Uh. <gasps> Get away from the edge. Get away from the edge. That's what happens when I try to talk lore sometimes. All right, Pale Tongue. This is actually our second one. We got one before at the uh, Undead Settlement. So again, claiming tongues as trophies was originally the practice of an infamous troop of invaders who offered them to their speechless goddess. All right, so now that we got another one, maybe it's a sign. Maybe a sign of things to come, perhaps. Some might say, some might believe. All right, is there any thralls for me to worry about? There we go. First things first, I just want to take care of all the thralls because screw that noise, screw that noise. Don't need that long range damage. Ha, you thought you were gonna get me, but you didn't, bye. Bye. All right, so, uh, up here we have a bunch of these knights. Oh, oh, oh! No more! I do, that's my problem with targeting, is a lot of times if I'm targeting, it really ups my rate of falling off things. So that would be the strongest problem with targeting, in my opinion, is that you might do that! You might do what I nearly did. Cool, all right, took care of one of them. And I gotta parry some happy. All right, so we get a blessed gem. Let's take a look at it. Using the fusion to create blessed weapons. Special blessed weapons gradually restore HP and heavily damage reanimated foes. So, also commonly known as a charm. Hold on, let's look at that. Where is it? Where's my blessed gem? Commonly known as a charm kept by saints. Hmm, interesting. Being that we're in the Cathedral of the Deep where Aldrich supposedly resides, and he was known as the Saint of the Deep. Also has to do with the Divine and all that. So, again, makes sense. All right, so we're gonna have a little bit of fun with this guy right here. First, we're gonna we're gonna trigger him. We're gonna say some stuff that's going to get him all triggered. I'm like, "Yo, I heard your mama's fat," and he's like, "Boy, you did not just trigger me!" Ah, jeez, holy crap! I didn't know that I was triggering all of them at once. All right, all right, guy. Oh, wow, he actually didn't fall off. A lot of times they fall off, which is really why I was doing that. See, there I was late common procedure for me actually is to be late as you guys have noticed late again late <gasps> i thought i was gonna roll off there it's very very norm for me to roll off by or not roll off to be late on those parries can we do it yes we can i'm not sorry by the way i said that about your mama not sorry hashtag not sorry all right, so let's go for the other guy. I got another good one for him. This one I'm harnessing from the Sega Saturn game, Albert Odyssey. This goes out to all you guys who had a Sega Saturn and played the Sega Saturn, because I had a Sega Saturn, I loved it. Hey, yo, hey, yo, I heard, yo, mom is so ugly, she looked out the window and got arrested for mooning. Yeah, I said it. When I was a kid and I played Albert Odyssey, I just thought that was absolutely hilarious, which is why I memorized it. Really, is it that funny? No. No, it's not. Alright. If they fix their tracking, I'm gonna be really sad, because this is a precarious situation for these guys. Did I did I kill him? Did he fall? Yes, he did. Alright, so yeah, a lot of times if you just, like, trigger these guys by, you know, saying some words to them, and they'll, they'll go on to Tumblr, they'll complain about it, and then they'll chase after you and just fall to their death. Yeah, I said it. All right, so anyways, let's uh, let's do a little drop down here. So 
looking over here, you see that you can drop down. You actually don't have to kill any of those guys up there. You can just run immediately to this spot if you want to and do the drop. And do the wiggle wiggle. Wow, that was actually uh, pretty precarious on my end. Alright, so, look up, and what do you know? What do you know? More ambushes. Also, we have these weird, distorted creatures here. What are these guys? I don't know, because we haven't seen them before. So let's, uh, <laughs> let's look at how grotesque they are for a moment. And something I actually didn't know until watching Snowsos' video on Rosaria, comparing it to uh, another character from Dark Souls 1. You guys can check out that lore video if you like. I'm not going to spoil anything. But something I never noticed is that if you look at its tail, it actually looks like it has two intertwined feet there, and that's kind of like wrapped up. You actually see two feet, you, and the like legs and the formings of it are just wrapped up. So, Also, a twitching hand. Ugh! <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and raise this sucker up. This is eventually going to be a nice shortcut for us. But yeah, so apparently those guys were actually transformed from being uh, humans to something else. We can see another one on the wall right there and to the left there, just kind of clutching to it. And if we look up here, we see A, a bunch of them on the ceiling, but also we see a bunch of them nailed to the walls and bleeding, just constantly bleeding, and it's just more of them just nailed to the wall, so that's pretty pretty grotesque, pretty cool if I do say so myself. And I'm going to say so, because that's what I think. Yeah, all them dropping. We probably want to take care of this guy if you can first, since he's going to actually do distance damage to you. The rest of them are pretty easy, really. The only one who's kind of a worry is that guy who's going to do distance to you. Ah, yeah, stop, stop. All right, so yeah, that's uh, these guys are all pretty easy. Uh. All right, although the one over here actually doesn't aggro against you, so this guy right here does not aggro. So we can take another look at him. And hi, what's up? I can't see your feet from here. Your gross foot thing but I can certainly kill you and get a red sign soapstone. So if you're wondering where to get the red sign soapstone, this is where to get it. You get the white sign soapstone from the Shrine Handmaiden, the red sign soapstone here. So there you go for anyone who is a curious. All right, so we have now reached a bunch of baby carriages just hanging on the ceiling, which is sort of weird, and all over the place, like... Sorry, I, it's weirding me out. And none other than Kirk's uh, equipment, since we killed him. So let's go ahead and take a look. Helm of Thorns. Helm of Kirk, the notorious Knight of Thorns. A dense patch of thorns that grows from its surface. Fitting item for the murderous Kirk, for even the simple act of rolling can damage enemies when wearing this attire. Again, I recommend checking out the F Kirk Fan Club if you haven't seen it, because it's pretty fantastic. Fire, fire, iron Pineapple. Iron Pineapple. Iron Pineapple. Armor of Thorns, same stuff there, so pretty cool stuff, but also we get, why, who is this? Why, it's none other than Rosaria. Come on, do this talk. Rosaria, Mother of Rebirth. Now, I believe you can join the Covenant without screwing up any quest lines, but if you give her anything for her Covenant, you will screw up your quest line of uh, Cirrus. So if you want to do the Cirrus quest line, just it's kind of better just to avoid Rosaria completely. I mean, go get this bonfire for sure, but just avoid joining the Covenant. I'm pretty sure you're okay though, unless you actually give her. Uh, so I, if you offer her a pale tongue, I think that's once you actually start to uh, piss off Cirrus. Anyways, uh, so here is Rosaria, the mother of Rebirth. You see, she's got some white strands in her hair. Uh, she seems to be. We can actually see her feet there. So it seemed that, I couldn't tell if this was like something coming out of her like back, it was some weird tail growing out of her, if she's just coddling this creature right there, which looks just like what we'd been seeing before, except for without the weird foot thing. It's likely she's probably just holding it and kind of coddling it. So whatever that weird moundy thing is on her. Uh, but her hair though, if you look, goes down and actually reaches all out, uh, all the way over here. If we look at our covenant that we just acquired, 
Rosaria's Fingers, Sacred Seal of Archdeacon Klimt, who serve Rosaria, Mother of Rebirth. Uh, Rosaria's Fingers collect tongues in her name. Some do it to be reborn, others do it to help comfort their voiceless goddess. So that is why, that is what the Pale Tongues are for, that's why they're collecting them. Archdeacon Klimt could be, now there's, these are just theories that I've seen, that people have talked about. Archdeacon Klimt could be this creature right here that she's taking care of being that uh, he has to do with this covenant so strongly, so strongly, as, uh, once again, it says right the way that these fingers that we just got, the Rosaria's fingers, are the sacred seal of Archdeacon Klimt. So it would, you know, it would serve to reason that he would be very close to her. The other character who might be Archdeacon Klimt is this one right over there that we murdered for the Red Sun Soapstone, being that that's another NPC. I think is a very, very likely that one of those two is Archdeacon Klimt, but again, nothing is, you know, proven and set in stone. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get this bonfire, this bonfire, and that's going to take me back to the Firelink Shrine, and then we're going to go back the other direction. So I'll see you guys soon. So now I will might as well level up at this point. All right, so let's do, let's see, some more decks, some more endurance. And some more vital. Eh, let's do some more decks. Actually, let's do a strength. I want I want one strength. You'll see why eventually. But I'm gonna gonna start actually leveling up my strength. I wanted to get it to 15. It's for my my favorite weapon in the game. All right, so that's gonna do us in. I will see you guys back again at the cleansing chapel. All right, here we are, back at the cathedral of the deep. Going to go back to my most recent shortcut again. But instead of going up, we're going to head back into the main part of the cathedral. I prefer to go find Rosaria first because of that platform I raised, and you'll see why probably in this episode. I'll say that's most likely you'll see why in this episode. All right, let's try to take out these thralls if I can. Good, good, good. Yeah, my main goal was I wanted to see if I could try to take on this guy without dealing with the thralls. Wow, that is like, it's pretty amazing that I'm stuttering this guy with just one kick. I was, I was expecting it to take a couple kicks there. A couple kicks? I'm talking about the cereal right now, if you if you didn't realize, by the way. Obviously. Obviously. Alright, so that right there is the thing that we raised. Um, that one has some significance. There are a couple other ones, like this one that I'm going to pull right here. I don't think that this has any significance at all. If I'm mistaken, please correct me, because I'm seriously curious, as I can't figure out what possible significance it might have. That said, yeah, so you can see, like, that's what I just raised up with that lever. Anyways, that said, hey, look, it's that giant that we saw before, but now we're on the same level as it. Great. Let's hit him in the hand. Him in the hand. Oh, I can't hit him in the hand again. Now notice in the foot where I'm at right now, you can actually see A, there's a bunch of shackles in him and things on him. But B, um, it actually looks like it's torn up a bit, right? Like the bottom of his foot looks like someone's been putting gashes into them. So to me, that would indicate that this seems to be an area that's probably weak for him. So if you do look up, I think you can see his health meter and you'll see that it actually is going down. It's just hard to see. Now, these giants are actually incredibly easy, in my opinion. As you can see, they're slow. There's, They'll try to stomp on you, but as long as you're pretty much right in the middle of them, there's not much they can do. Yeah, so there he goes, trying to stomp at me. I'm actually surprised he's not already dead, to be honest, but... It's alright. Oh, I didn't think I had another hit in me, so I... One more? No? Two more? Alright, there we go. Now he's dead. So yeah, super easy from below, so you can just take care of these giants from below and go back up and get those items if you don't feel like dealing with dodging those swipes from him. Ooh, nice, we get a large titanite shard, and of course, of course some dung pies. We get the maiden set on top of this pile of corpses. That's uh, kind of incredibly disturbing. I don't know if there's any real lore on the maiden set. The maiden set, by the way, is associated with Guinevere and Dark Souls 1. Normal attire regardless of rank. It is soft and well-made, but ill-suited for use in battle. At least I think it's associated with Guinevere. I think she had a bunch of maidens uh, serving her. And we have yet another entrance here. Now, if you think about 
really where things are connected. This isn't going to be that entrance that I... Uh, this isn't going to be that main entrance that I skipped showing you guys at the beginning because this is the wrong direction. But if you think back to when we looked out at the side and saw an item below, why it's actually going to be the entrance that looks out at that item. Or not... Yeah, yeah, that goes to that item that we saw below. So... From up there, that's where we look down, and this is actually the item that we saw before, which was a homeward bone. A couple of homeward bones, and we're... Uh, yeah, and then below... Okay, cool, I was right, yeah, so that's the Road of Sacrifice right there. That's that little, like, side path I took the other episode by the guy with the spider shield. And here we get the Saint Bident. So, we're gonna find out some more lore about Archdeacon Klimt here. Let's go ahead and find our Saint Bident. A silver bident decorated by a holy symbol formerly wielded by Saint Klimt. He discarded this weapon that draws upon one's faith on the day that he put his own faith behind him. So it would stand to reason that he left the service of uh, whomever he was serving, who I don't think we found out and discovered at this point, whoever he was initially an archdeacon for, in order to serve Rosaria. So, the mother of rebirth. Alright, and let's go back through this crap, which I was actually afraid of initially would poison me, but they're actually nice this time, and it doesn't. Which, thank goodness, because after dealing with Farron Keep, that was enough poison for me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Alright, I think we only have one time for one more uh, area that I'm going to go through here, and then I'm going to try to open up that other shortcut that I mentioned to you guys, and I'll probably wrap up this episode. So we have yet another giant. So if you didn't think you could kill a giant from before, I think that this is the true indicator that it is indeed possible. Alright, I, I kind of want to just murder... The, there we go. I was like, you know, I don't care about most of these creatures, but those thralls are pretty annoying to me. Now, if you notice, this giant is actually hurting all these slimes as well. It's going to be hurting everything in its range that it hits. Which I like. I like that it does that damage. Like, a lot of games would have it so enemies can't hurt other enemies. But it would stand a reason that a giant is swiping downwards, and if it hits anything, it's going to hurt anything that it hits. Just incidentally, so I do actually really like that. So, again, these slimy guys, weak to fire, but, you know, that's, that's okay. I'm kind of just going to ignore them for the most part and try to finish off the giant since that's the real threat here. Those guys will basically just chip away a little bit of damage unless they trap you somehow. So, there we go. Giant dead just like that. Not a problem, not at all difficult, and now I can deal with these things a little bit better. Holding R2 attacks is going to do a lot of damage with the torch. You can just go ahead and use, if you prefer, you can just go ahead and use your normal weapon, but I'll go ahead and use their weakness. I'll go ahead and use that. Hey! Hey, you! Hey, you! I think that takes care of most of them. Alright, before I go ahead and pick up all those drops, because actually the giant did drop something. I want to go here over here and show yet another thing that's kind of been baffling me. So see this right here? That is yet another one of those areas that we can raise up, which I'm going to do by going over here. Once again though, I really don't understand what the point of this is. So now we've raised up all three of them that you can raise up. And I have absolutely no clue what it does. Other than just, you raise something up. So, if anyone knows, I would actually really appreciate it. Because you guys have been sharing me with me a bunch of knowledge that I didn't know. Like, there was uh, actually an item I missed at Farron Keep, which I'll get next episode. That, uh, okay, so all you dropped was the Large Titanite Shard and more Dung Pie, which makes sense. Anyways, yeah, there was something I missed last episode that you guys pointed out to me from Farron Keep. Just an item drop from an enemy. And it relates to that white birch tree that I had no idea about. So, you know, it's always awesome when you guys share this new info with me. So I, I cannot thank you guys enough. We got some more pale tongues dropped around this area, or just by this area with these, these more of these creatures that we saw along the wall there. Actually, I do want to show... Let's show this. Alright, so right up there, that's Rosaria's chamber. And you can see yet more of those guys just bleeding and all that weird goop coming from it. 
And we've been getting all this drain equipment, which I've avoided talking about specifically because I want to pick it all up before I do. So drain hammers, drain equipment. I don't think there's any reason to kill that blob, but just in case. Just in case, because I would be remiss if I missed anything. Oh, I just realized I also missed something on the way to the Cathedral to Deep. I should probably pick that up real quick, shouldn't I? That you guys were mentioning to me on the passage. Alright, anyways. Let's look at the drain set, and I'll probably do that as quickly as I can. I mean, like, going and picking up that item I missed at the end of this. Item I missed. Alright, so, first of all, we get the drain hammers. Let's go ahead and look at those dual hammers. Parrot hammers are the Drang Knights, descendants from the land known for the legend of the linking of the fire. When the Drang Knights disbanded, they scattered across the lands as cell swords. They quickly became known for their shieldless, aggressive tactics that struck fear in the hearts of men. A uh, real interesting point I want to show with these is that dual wielding weapons, which happens to relate to Dark Souls 2, because that's when you were able to dual wield, was in that game. And this is very, very much, very strongly a reference to Drang... Oh, what do you know? Drangleic. So Drangleic of Dark Souls 2, and that is what it's referencing. Uh, then we also get the Drang Armor, which, uh, yeah, it actually looks like the Drangleic set that you get. So, not the Faram set, not to be confused with that set. This is a different set. I think this is the Llewellyn set, if I'm not mistaken, from Dark Souls 2. Armor of the Drang Knights proclaimed descendants from the land known for the Linking of the Fire, or the Legend of the Linking of the Fire. Fire protection that is both light and strong, having been reinforced with a rare Guest Steel. Guest Steel was a specific type of steel that the Drang uh, picked up from another area. They, they specifically got an armorer who could use Guest Steel. The Drang Knights were once feared cell sores until treason meant descending into the Abyss, and they were separated for forever. Or for for or just forever. If it's not obvious to you, and if it hasn't been obvious to you yet, Dark Souls 3 takes place after the events of both Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 2. I've seen people argue that's not the case, and I'm just like, uh... I, I think they made it pretty obvious in the item descriptions that it takes place after Dark Souls 2. So, I'm not sure where the hesitation in believing that is coming from, but... I find it fairly obvious, so... You know, that's just, that's just I, that is just me. Alright, let's- oh wow, oh wow, I am getting destroyed because I should not have headed this way where I have even less room to deal with these guys. I should just- ugh, ugh. Alright, there we go. Oh, I got lucky, man. The guy who's easier to kill is the only one who seemed to follow me over here. Cathedral Knight Leggings. Oh, awesome. We can actually take a look at the Cathedral Knights now. Alright, massive iron knight leggings worn by knights of the Cathedral of the Deep. Repulsive creatures of the Deep are sure to attract the foolish, but the temple knights are prepared to meet some, such intruders head-on with their more than ample knights. So these guys were protecting the Cathedral of the Deep, as, what do you know, weirdly enough, people seem to want to invade and stop them from these weird-ass practices that they were doing. How strange. Oh! Oh, look at that timing! Oh, look at that, it felt so good! It felt so good! I just want to kill all these guys so next time I come over to this area I don't have to. So I can be like, cool, I did it all. I did it all. You can see a bunch of these guys just uh, resting. We see what they're worshipping is that altar right in front of us over there. Up here we get an ember. And yeah, I think that's pretty much what we're going to find in this little this little altar area. Now, going the next area to head is up ahead, uh, straight over that way. Let's see. Cool. Yeah, nothing over here. So, next episode we'll go in that direction, but for this episode we're going to wrap up by going up here on this elevator. And then I'm going to go ahead and... There's an item that I missed last episode on the Road of Sacrifice, so I'll go ahead and grab that. That was by the... Uh, by those evangelists. one An evangelist and a bunch of carriers. Here is another door to the Cathedral of the Deep. And opening it, you will notice that this is the entrance that I did not go through the other time as I couldn't open it from this side, probably because it, you would have had to pull it. So that is probably why it did not open from this side, is because you have to kind of push those doors open since they don't have handles to pull with. Uh, if you notice now, see right over there, that is actually one of those archways that I rose. But first, let's get more dual charms. So see, if I go this way... It doesn't lead to that other archway that I opened up, how or I rose, but this one is the one that I rose earlier from the Rosaria side, so this is going to be a shortcut back to Rosaria, 
And actually, in my opinion, this is the best shortcut, this, the quickest shortcut in this area. So if you want a really quick shortcut, Rosaria and this is a good quick shortcut. All right, so I'm going back to the Rose of Sacrifices, and then I'm going to level up in Firelink Shrine. So see you guys in just a moment. All right, here we are, back at the Road of Sacrifice. And hey, oops, wow, that was really bad on my part. I actually thought that the bridge had stopped it. All right, so here's the set that I missed, the Herald set. So that's all I wanted to grab. All right, I'll see you guys in the Firelink Shrine. All right, so let's take a look at this Herald set and see if it has anything. Steel armor with a pure white cape, the signature of Heralds of the Way of White. Protection made of steel has excellent physical absorption, but it's found lacking against blood strikes and lightning damage. So, again, another uh, Way of White on the way to the Cathedral of the Deep. So, just more Way of White connections there. Welcome. All right, let's go ahead and get my level up. And I'll do another Strength. Get up to 15 like I need to do, even though it doesn't give me any extra damage. Ooh, actually, for this boss, I'm gonna go up to go up to 29 just for this boss oh, specifically. Gosh. Something we're gonna want for the next boss coming up is going to be some alluring skulls, and you will see why next episode. So, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you guys next time when where I'll probably end up fighting a couple bosses and have a whole bunch of lore to talk about. So, see you guys later. Bye, guys. Peace.